Hello, everyone. Welcome to North Park Community Church for a very normal service. Everything is according to plan right now. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Joel. I'm one of the pastors here at North Park. I'm really excited to invite you or welcome you here this morning. Uh, we are going to be doing something both similar but also a little bit different this morning. What's different is the presence of all of these wonderful kids. We're going to be primarily led into worship today by the children of North Park. But what's similar about that is that we're being led into worship. We are being led to do what we are being led to do each and every time that we come into this building, which is to hear from our God and to worship a God who loves us so much that he would send his son to die for us and to rise again for us. And that's what we get to celebrate today as we celebrate the empty tomb. And so as we begin our service this morning, I'm going to call forward or invite forward two children of North Park, Simon and Emma, who are going to read a psalm for us as we begin our service. Praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens, praise him for his acts of power, praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet, praise him with the harp and lyre, praise him with the tambourine and dancing, praise him with the strings and flute, praise him with the clash of cymbals, praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise the Lord.
think we need another round of applause. That was amazing. <laughs> So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna get you to go back to your seats, but before we do, I want all the parents to stand up so they know exactly where to go. And once you see your parent, we're gonna get Sharon and Elise. Where's your family? Where's your family? Where's your family? Where's your family? I know. Okay. So at this point, I would like to invite the ukulele club to come up. And while they're coming up to the front, I just wanted to further explain what, or the importance of this service and why we're doing this today. So normally your children are in their classrooms learning about Jesus and worshiping in the theater um, and having a blast, I have to be honest. Um, but they have been, since January, they have been practicing and working so incredibly hard to bring you this worship service today. Um, so I want to emphasize, it's not a performance. Like Joel said, we are being led into worship by these wonderful kids. So we encourage you to participate, to clap. I see lots of cameras, so please don't be shy. You can always take pictures and videos as well. Um, and this is a very important way for us all to come together as a church family. Okay. Maya, there you are. I would like to invite Maya Enns to lead us in prayer right now. Dear God, thank you for this special day of Easter joy. We are so excited to be a part of a skit and choir telling everyone about the love and hope that you bring. Help us remember that Easter is about your son, Jesus, who loves us so much. As we act and sing, may our words and melodies touch hearts, spreading light to everyone here. Bless our voices as we join the choir, and may the songs we sing be like hugs to everyone listening. In our skit, let your story shine through us, bringing smiles and warmth to every face. We ask for your love to guide us, and may this Easter celebration be a time of joy, laughter, and remembering the amazing gift of your son, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Maya.
As our ukulele club gets settled, we're going to ask the grade one to five worship singers to come forward. And as they come forward and, and get set um, up here, will you just turn to somebody near you um, and greet them, say good morning. Um, take a few moments. as we sing together as a church and worship.
was excellent. Thank you so much. Let's give a round of applause again. All right. Make sure everyone finds their parents and gets back. Or no, actually, sorry, they're in the front row. Never mind. Okay. So during our services, we usually take some time to join our voices together to affirm the Apostles' Creed. Um, today we're going to do things a little differently, as you've probably noticed. Um, Leo, or Theo, sorry, is going to read the Apostles' Creed for us. And normally we would recite it with him or read it with him. But today he's going to do it all by himself. So I invite you to sit and just reflect on the words that he's going to read in your hearts. We are now reading from the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin of Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, he was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you, Theo. All right. So, good morning. I hope everyone's having a fantastic time with all the, the noisy, fantastic, wonderful chaos that uh, we all get to experience today, and I absolutely love it. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Paula Dibbets. I'm the Interim Director of Children's Ministry here at North Park. Um, so I have a few announcements I want to share with you. First, if you are new here, welcome. We are so glad that you're here. And if you're curious about what North Park is, if you want to get to know other events that are going on, I encourage you to fill out a connect card that's in the seat ahead of, or in front of you, yes, thank you. <laughs> and uh, just put it in the back of the, the church in the offering boxes, and we'd love to connect with you. And secondly, this is our all-in family service. So junior highs, you will not be dismissed, but you get to enjoy everything that's going on today. And uh, lastly, as we're gathered here, I want to take a moment to shine a spotlight on some very special members of our church community. Our children's ministry and youth volunteers, they devote their time, a lot of energy, and a lot of love to nurture the young hearts within our congregation. And the dedication that they have does not go unnoticed. Children's ministry here at North Park happens every single Sunday of the year, except for today. And uh, that means that we have our classes and rooms available from birth all the way up to junior high. So each Sunday at our 9-11 services, we depend on approximately 50, that's five zero, hardworking, passionate adults and youth. They welcome our families as they come into North Park. They help them register and print name tags, answer any questions that they may have, and to love your children. They also share how Jesus wants to be their friend forever and how much God loves them no matter what. This could be a leader in the classroom, youth engaging with the children, an individual will hang out with a child who may need some more individual attention, or a warm welcoming smile to a new or regular family. Relationships are so important in order for children to feel safe, to feel a sense of belonging, and for them to feel loved. And this absolutely cannot happen without our team. So I didn't let the volunteers know this ahead of time, but I would like them to stand. Please, wherever you are, I would like you to stand in your seats if you are a volunteer of our ministry. Volunteers, you are the heartbeat of our children and youth ministries. You are the hands and feet of Jesus. Your tireless efforts, unwavering commitment, and immense compassion 
create an environment where children can grow, learn, and thrive in their faith. Week after week, you selflessly give your time to engage with our families, with the children through lessons, guidance, lending a listening ear, a cuddle, and a good book with a little one, and you shower our children with love and encouragement. Your dedication and passion leave a permanent mark on the hearts of our children, shaping them into the future leaders of our church community. As a church family, we are profoundly grateful for the invaluable role you play in shaping the spiritual journey of our children. Your impact extends far beyond the walls of this, of this sanctuary, and it leaves a lasting legacy of faith, hope, and love. So thank you, thank you from the depths of our hearts, your dedication, your support, and your love. And may you continue to be blessed abundantly as you bless, bless others with your kindness and generosity. So I'd like to ask you again to please join me in thanking our volunteers. Now, I was hoping the volunteers would stay standing, but they've already sat down. So. Um, so at this time during our regular service, we usually have a scripture reading. Uh, today's scripture reading will be presented by the children in the form of a skit. Before that, our chimes choir will be playing Holy, Holy, Holy. Jesus had died on the cross just a few days earlier, and after he died, he was buried in the tomb. His family and friends were very sad. His family and friends missed him very much. Early on Sunday morning, while it's still dark, Mary and some other women went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away. This astonished them. But there was something even more astonishing. The body of Jesus was not in the tomb. Mary came running to tell the disciples. She spoke with two of them named Simon, Simon, Peter, and John. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have put him. Simon, Peter, and John started for the tomb. Both were running, but John ran Simon, Peter, and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separated from the linen. They still did not believe, oh wait, understand, from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. Two angels appear at the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look at the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They spoke to her. Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, and I do not know where they have put him. At this, Mary turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize yet that it was Jesus. She thought perhaps the man that she saw was the gardener. Woman, 
Why are you crying? Who is this you are looking for? Sir, if you have taken him, tell me where you put him and I will get him. Mary? Rabbi? Do not hold on to me, for I have not ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to the I'm ascending to my Father, to your Father, to my God, to your God. Mary went to the disciples with news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them all the things that he had said to her. Now Jesus' friends didn't have to be sad anymore. Now they knew that Jesus was alive forever. news the tomb is empty Jesus is alive what a blessing to have our kids here this morning leading us kids bring so much joy with them don't they and uh, before I continue I'll just quickly say if you know what the sound of my voice <laughs> is supposed to sound like it's a little off this morning uh, just rest assured uh, I'm feeling a lot better my voice just didn't get the memo yet it's catching up but we're gonna be okay so we have uh, our recorder club in a moment is going to play for us. And first I have just a quick little story to tell you. Over March break, our family had the opportunity to visit an indoor water park. And uh, one to fives, you've been in for the previous service, so you know the answer to this question. In my family, who likes water parks the most? Is it my kids? <laughs> no, who is it? Shout it out, it's me. <laughs> It's me, I love them. Generally when you go to the water park, it's for the kids. I'm sure they liked it, but I would have gone without them. I think water parks are so much fun. And some of the slides were really exciting, like fast moving with unexpected twists and turns and drops. And some people, you could hear them like screaming as they went down. Um, for some of you, you're thinking that does not sound like fun, right? But I loved it. Um, my favorite slide, though, wasn't quite like that. It was a, a single tube slide that just kind of went on forever. It took a long time to get down to the bottom, and it, it was just sort of like playful, and you'd float along, uh, and just really delightful and enjoyable, so much so that as I traveled down the slide, this like giggle welled up. I was just laughing as I went down this slide. And as I laughed my way down, I thought, I don't think I've had that kind of experience. Uh, of something being so fun and delightful that it made me giggle probably since I was a kid. And then this thought occurred to me, it just might be that generally speaking, I'm entirely too serious. <laughs> and maybe you can relate, many adults have this same affliction, we're far too serious. And because of this, I imagine that today's service must feel a little out of the ordinary for the grown-ups in the room, much more joyful and energetic and busy than we're used to. There's all sorts of chaos and kerfuffling going on this morning, but I hope you agree it's a beautiful kind of chaos and it's very joyful and we're so grateful for it. And I think it's pretty perfect coming just on the heels of Easter. We celebrated Easter last week, but we are, we're in the Easter season and we are keeping the celebration going because we can have today this joyful continuation of the celebration of the resurrection. The news discovered by Mary at the empty tomb that Jesus is alive is supremely joyful news. And so it's just right this morning and I'm so delighted at the way that our kids are so joyfully leading today. And so with this in mind, we have our recorder club and this has basically just been a very long introduction to tell you that they want to play for you a song of joy. Maybe one of the most joyful hymns that we know. Joyful, joyful, we adore you. And as they play, we're going to have the words up on the screen. We're not going to sing it, but we just want to reflect on the words if we can uh, as they play these joy -filled, this joy-filled song of praise. Let's hear them now.
Okay, thank you so much, Recorder Club. I loved that. Okay, so I've got a few words to share with you all today. I promise it will be much shorter than a typical sermon. Uh, I know it's not easy for some of our younger kids to sit still for too long, and some of our kids have been here all morning, uh, and you guys have already heard me say a lot of this, right? So yeah, you know, you know what I'm going to say. Um, so I'll tell you, pay attention. I'm going to throw something new in just for you guys, okay? So you wait for that. Um, but the story from scripture that the kids presented to us this morning, it's just so good. We do want to spend a little bit of time reflecting on it. And I also wanted to have a chance to express to you all how awesome it is to have our kids leading us this morning. I know I've already talked about how kids have this incredible capacity for joy. And I hope that their joyfulness and their energy has uplifted you today. But I also know that our children have so much more to offer us, more than just that high energy and fun and cuteness, although the cute factor is super high this morning, for sure. But our kids here at North Park are amazing. I'm not gonna name names, but I know that some of you come up and ask really deep questions on Sunday mornings. I know many of you have a wonderful faith growing in your hearts. I know some of you send in prayer requests to us because you believe and trust in the power of prayer. I know so many of you just love Jesus so much and you've shared that with us so beautifully this morning. And I know some of you are wrestling with the very same questions about life and God and faith that the rest of us do. Questions like, where is there, why is there suffering or what's the purpose of our lives? And when my youngest daughter was pretty little, I can't remember exactly how old she was, but maybe like pre-kindergarten or maybe JK, and I was tucking her in at night and she looked at me and she said, Mom, what's the point of it all? <laughs> and I said, well, what do you mean, honey? And she replied, what's the point of it all? You know, life. You, you are, you're born and you live and you do a bunch of things and then you die and then there's heaven. Like, what's the point of it all? And I, I don't remember what on earth I said to her in, in re response to that, but I, w I remember just being so astounded that at such a young age, she could wrap her mind around such a big question about the purpose and meaning of life. People have been working on that question pretty much forever, right? And now from this very early age, my little philosopher child was working on it too. And this little moment has stayed with me over the years, just reminding me that our kids have so much more going on in their little minds and hearts than we ever realize. And this is one of the reasons that we believe at North Park from infants all the way up to high school, that our children and youth programming, it's not meant to be just like babysitting or entertainment. Like yes, we wanna care well for the kids and we want them to have fun, right guys? Fun is important. Fun is important, yeah. But also, our volunteers are pouring out their time, first and foremost, to build into the spiritual lives of our children. Kids have an incredible capacity to ask big questions, to pray big prayers, to follow Jesus wholeheartedly, and to serve and to lead in the church. And not just in the future, but now, today. We know that our kids at North Park have a tremendous amount of gifts to offer to the church and to the world. And you guys, JKs, SKs, grade one to five kiddos, we've seen this firsthand today. Thank you so much for leading us so well. And I know you're not finished yet. You've got another worship set for us for, for the end of the service. But first, we're just gonna take a few minutes to look at the Bible passage for today that you presented for us so creatively. It comes from John chapter 20, and I wanna just start kinda halfway through, starting at verse 11. We find Mary at the tomb crying, because she was so, so sad that her friend had died. And when she discovered that the tomb was empty, she was even more upset. You see, people find great comfort in being able to go to the grave of a loved one when they've passed away. It helps them to feel a little closer to the person that they've lost. It provides a space and a place for their grief. And so discovering the emptiness of the tomb added to Mary's deep sadness. It amplified the emptiness of her loss. And so she stood in front of this empty space in this deep place of grief, and she didn't know that Jesus had written, risen. She thought he was just gone, that someone had taken him. 
And she was so confused and disoriented to discover the empty tomb that even the presence of these two angels, it didn't seem to faze her, right? Like these angels show up and she just sort of interrogates them. <laughs> is that, you know, if, is that what you imagine? If two angels showed up, you might be like, wow, like something's happening here, right? You might dare to hope, dare to think that maybe something could go well here, but she, was, she just didn't see it. And then this man appeared behind her and she turned and at first she didn't recognize him. She thought maybe he was the gardener. She thought maybe he was the culprit, the one who had taken Jesus away. But then he spoke her name, Mary. And all of a sudden she knew it was him. And all of a sudden this place of grief, this empty tomb was filled with hope and joy. And I think sometimes we are a lot like Mary when we find ourselves in those difficult, painful, empty, grieving spaces in our lives, we sometimes miss seeing that Jesus is there. We don't recognize his presence with us. It's hard to recognize him in the midst of our pain sometimes. And sometimes we need this kind of experience like Mary had of turning around and shifting our focus and coming to realize that the one who knows us deeply and sees us and loves us is right there calling us by name. And there's something so important about being known by name, isn't there? As your pastors, our team are always working on knowing your names, it is not easy. This is a big church. And sometimes I feel like, like my name recall system is kind of like in slow motion. And so as people's names come to me, it is often about 10 seconds after you've like passed me in the hallway and then I'm like, oh, right, that was Susan. Um, but I'm, I'm working on it, we're, we're all working on it. Does anyone else find this hard just to know people's names? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, we had, I just have to share this, we had a little uh, grade one to fiver like holding her mom's up, hand up for her. Like, yeah, mom, this is, yeah, that was great. Um, Okay, we are always working on this because we believe it's important. And it's one of the reasons why we're always encouraging you to talk with each other, to stick around for coffee, to visit with one another, to learn the name of someone new. Because if we all work at it, we know it's possible for everybody in this church to be known by name by someone when they come to church. And this is so important because when we call each other by name, we are not only helping people to feel valued and seen and known here at North Park, we're helping to remind one another that we are all valued and seen and known by God. He has called each of us by name. And we need this just as Mary needed it. She needed Jesus to look her in the eyes and call her by name and fill the empty tomb with joy because Jesus who knew her and loved her and saw her was present with her he had risen from the dead. It's pretty incredible, but the story doesn't end there. And what happened next is really astounding. Are you ready for it? Jesus sent Mary to deliver a message to the disciples. Can you believe it? Amazing, no, like dead silence. Um, so for many of us, this doesn't seem very remarkable. Really, it's, it's fair to assume that Mary would have gone to the disciples to tell them what had happened, even if Jesus hadn't told her to do it. But it's actually really remarkable that Jesus specifically gave her this job to deliver the message to the disciples. Mary was the first person to encounter Jesus after the resurrection, and this was on purpose. Like we saw in the skit how the, some of the other disciples, they were at the tomb. They saw the empty tomb but Jesus didn't appear to them. God chose Mary for this. He chose her to be the first evangelist, not only the first witness to the resurrection, but the first person to be sent by God to proclaim the good news about Jesus to others, that he is risen. And this is remarkable because, as Pastor Joel talked about last Sunday, in those days, women were not considered as important as men, and they were less likely to be believed so much so that they couldn't be used as witnesses in a court case, their testimony wouldn't count. Uh, and thinking about this actually this morning, this reminded me, um, there's some kids that I know, they're a little older now, there's an older sister and a younger sister, and when the older sister was four years old, her parents came down to the basement and discovered that the TV had been knocked over. 
okay? And it would, like the, the screen had shattered and whatever. And she very convincingly told her parents that her two-year-old sister had walked by the TV and knocked it over. And her parents, not being very smart, lots of parents aren't very smart, right? Believed her. So a handful of years later, it came out that the two-year-old sister had not broken the TV. It was the (laughs) four-year-old. She came clean years later. And so, you know, this reminded me, I just thought, yeah, way back when, Bible times, like, women weren't seen as reliable witnesses. You know, sometimes kids are also not seen as reliable witnesses. But you guys would never do that, right? We could trust you if you you tell us stuff. We will believe you. Yeah, I got some nods. Okay. So, unfortunately, back then, women were not considered reliable witnesses. and, And so, it's all the more amazing that Jesus chose Mary for this important moment. This matters for a lot of reasons. Pastor Joel talked about some of them last week, but today, the thing I want us to see is that God uses unexpected people to do amazing things. He uses unlikely people to accomplish his work in the world. And we see this play out all through the Bible, from Moses to David to the Apostle Paul. A murderer became a deliverer. An underdog defeated the giant and became a great king. And the one, like this guy who was persecuting the early Christians became an apostle and spread the gospel to the world. God doesn't tend to choose the obvious heroes, the strongest ones or the richest ones or the ones who are doing everything perfectly. He doesn't choose the ones who seem more important than everyone else. Instead, he uses unexpected people to do amazing things. And that's important for us to remember. It's something that I'll bet many of the adults in the room here today need to maybe hear. Maybe you're feeling not good enough these days. Maybe you've been feeling unimportant lately or forgotten. Or maybe you're feeling empty-handed, like you don't have much to offer. And so maybe you need to hear this today, that God uses unlikely people to fulfill his mission, and he has kingdom work that he wants to accomplish through you, and he'll do it if you're willing to listen for his voice and hear him call you by name and to follow where he leads you. Adults need to know this for sure. But I'm talking about it today especially because I want all our kids to to know this. I want our JKs, our SKs, our grade one to five kids, our youth. I want all of you to hear this, that God can work through each and every one of you in amazing ways. You are all filled up with gifts for the church and for the world, and God can use you to be a blessing to those around you. And we have experienced the truth of that today. Through your joyful worship, you have blessed us. And I know uh, grades one to five, when you come back up here, one of the songs you're gonna sing uses the words from 1 Timothy 4, verses 12. Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. You know these words really well, don't you? You've been practicing them, hey? They're familiar. And I hope as you sing them today, that you will sing them knowing that they're true, that God can use your joy, your wisdom, your kindness, your voice, your love, your faith, your generosity, so many things to bless others and to grow his kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. He's got a plan and you are all a part of it. So remember, church, Jesus is calling each one of you by name. He knows you, he cares for you, He is there with you through all the ups and downs of life. And he can use you no matter how small, no matter how young, no matter how unimportant you might feel because in God's kingdom, you are very, very important. And you have so much to offer the world. So grades one to five, along with the worship band, we're gonna invite you to come back up because we want to experience more of that joy and all that you have to offer. I'm gonna move out of your way, but as you come up, we're just gonna embrace the chaos of this a little bit. Normally, we close in prayer, and I'm still gonna do that. I'm gonna close my uh, sermon in prayer, 
And normally we're very quiet when we do this. It's not going to be quiet, and that's okay. We can still pray, and God will still hear us. So let's pray, church. Lord, he's working. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all of our kids here in North Park. We thank you for their joyful presence in this building. We thank you for the vibrancy that they bring to this church, and we thank you for the many ways that you are helping them to grow in faith, to discover their gifts, to know you more deeply, and to become more like Jesus. Lord Jesus, we pray that every person here at North Park would know that you are alive and present in our lives. We pray that every person here at North Park would know that they are loved and valued and seen and called by name and invited to participate in your kingdom work in the world. And Lord, as our children lead us now, help us to worship you with grateful hearts and with joy-filled praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Well, church, as our kids lead us now, we're gonna invite you to stand. And let's be joyful. Let's follow their example. Sing with them as you're able. Maybe even move and groove along with them. I want to see some song actions coming from out there. I want to hear some clapping. Sometimes the kids get the clapping going, and then they've got like some, they'll stop clapping because they've got some things. You guys, keep it going. Keep it going. Show them that you're with them, and let them lead you as we worship together as a community. Let's sing together.
every thing that has breath, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, our service is almost to a close, but we just have, well, two more things to do. Okay, number one, we have some thank yous, right guys? We have some thank yous. So a lot of volunteers poured out all sorts of time and energy into making this morning possible. So we want to thank all of our adult and youth leaders who helped with our kids band, Kelly and Julia and Peyton and Patrick and Dave and John and Dan. I hope we haven't forgotten anybody. We want to thank Tom Miles who built the set for us today. That's pretty awesome. We want to thank David, Luby and Jab who were covering sound and graphics for us in the back. We want to thank all of our kids who led so well today. Yes. <laughs> Way to go. And finally, we want to thank uh, Elise and Shannon who put together our JKSK choir for us and Carolyn and Rachel, who they came up with this whole idea. They planned it, they pulled it together. They just love the kids here at North Park so well and have such a vision for knowing how they can be a blessing to the church. So uh, can we just thank them for this wonderful gift this morning? Okay, so we are going to wrap this service up with just a prayer of blessing, and then uh, you guys know your part. When we're finished, you're going to be able to go to see your parents, so everybody, do you see where your parents are? Have a look. Give me a thumbs up. Does everyone know where they're going? Wait, not yet, though. Not yet. We just want to make sure you know where you're going. If your parents are in the balcony, don't go to them. Stay here, and they'll come to you. Okay? Everybody good? All right. So here's our prayer of blessing. North Park Community Church, from infants and toddlers to kids and youth and young adults and young professionals and parents and grandparents, middle-agers and empty nesters, retirees and seniors, may all of you trust and believe in this truth. May you know it in your very hearts that Jesus is alive. May you know that you are loved, seen, and valued by the one who has called you by name and has a wonderful purpose for you. May you know his presence in your life and be filled with joy. Amen? Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Be free. Be free.